quick word of caution before I get started. This video ain't gonna be applicable to everybody. In fact, there's only gonna be a small minority of people that have even got the foggiest idea what I'm talking about in this video. It's gonna be long just by the nature of what I'm showing. It's gonna take a while to get through it. That's just system limitations. Uh, but it's an educational advisory video for anybody thinking about using replication. There is one specific problem that I come across on a regular basis, and I'm growing a little weary and exhausted with having to explain this to people, mostly Autodesk, actually. <laughs> <laughs> the most recent example was this morning, uh, advising them that this is a problem because uh, worryingly quite a few people don't really realize that this is a thing. So I'm going to document it on my YouTube channel and then point people towards this uh, in the future. But other people who are thinking about using replication can watch this and then work around the problem as they see fit once they understand the issue. So what you're looking at is me logged into my live system. This is a system that I've I've built, I manage. It's a five site globally replicated, uh, it's a global engineering company, uh, five sites around the world. Uh, the server that you've seen here, this is our UK server. This is the Vault client logged into a folder called test, which is away from all the live stuff. And I've got a, an inventor session open as well, ready to put a file into the vault. And then on my remote desktop over here, I'm logged into uh, Holland. This is a workstation in an office in Holland and I'm logged into the Dutch server Same folder test and then I've got an inventor client open as well for anybody not sure how replication works What you're looking at are two systems logged in to two different vaults, but they're the same They're replicated. So this test folder here in Holland is the exact same folder as this one here in the UK when a change is made to this folder or anything in this vault, it is then replicated over to the Dutch vault. So the people in Holland will then see anything that's been added to the UK server and all the other servers that we've got in the pool. However, there is an inherent problem with replication and it's nothing you can do about it, but it's called the, well, I think this is an unofficial term, but it's called the uh, SQL heartbeat is what I, I know it as. Whether I've made that up or that is an official thing, I don't know. The heartbeat is the time it takes. It's like a tick. It's the time it takes for one server to tell another server that something has changed. And this is what I mean. On the UK server, I'm going to add a new subfolder to this test folder. Simple stuff. So I'm going to call this uh, no, subfolder, whatever. Don't care what it's called, but I've added a new folder to the UK server. When I go over to Holland, right, you can see it's not there. If I hit refresh, it's still not there. This heartbeat can take anywhere between, I've seen it take five to 10 seconds. With these two servers that you're looking at right now, we've got hundreds of miles in between these two servers. So the SQL heartbeat, the time it takes for one server to tick that information over to the other server is much, much, much longer. In fact, at the moment, I'm seeing it take anywhere between one minute to two minutes for one server to tell the other server that something's changed. So all this time that I'm waffling on, padding, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm waiting for it to actually update the other server. People are working in this Dutch vault and they have absolutely no idea that that subfolder has been created. Now that's fine, it's just an empty folder, but you do get issues when people add new files to one vault and it takes anywhere up to two minutes for those files to appear in the other vault. If you've got people working on the same project, that can lead to some, what I would call, inconvenient delays. So I'm still sitting here pressing refresh. I, I'm not counting how long this has taken, but it's probably between one minute to two minutes for the UK server to update the Netherlands server to say that a new folder has been created inside this test folder. Now at the moment, the the, uh, the heartbeat is a little longer. The, file, the folder's just appeared there now. So I would say that was approximately, I would say a minute and a half. But the SQL heartbeat here is unusually long. It shouldn't be taken as long as it is. So what's the problem? It's probably sat there going, well, all right, okay, so you've waited a minute and a half, two minutes for a folder to appear. What's the big deal? Right, that's obviously not the problem. The problem occurs when you start using uh, more advanced entities with an Autodesk vault. Specifically, in this case, this whole video, the purpose is to highlight an issue with vaults numbering schemes. So our UK server and our Netherlands server, they by design share the same numbering schemes. There's nothing we can do about that. Again, that's something that Autodesk can work on. But when you create a numbering scheme on one vault, that numbering scheme is then available to other servers. So it makes sense if you've got two sites working on the same project that they will need to use the same numbering scheme. They will same, need to use the same part numbers for the files that they're generating. So let's head on back over to the UK. Let's go to Inventor. Let's create a new file. So just a new part file. And when I hit save, we'll get this dialog box pops up. 
This dialog box is Vault, saying to Inventor, right, we've got a bunch of numbering schemes that we can use. I've created one called Test. So when you click OK, it's going to create a number from Vault, issued by Vault, ABC dash, and then an automatically generated number. If we head on over to Holland, Inventor, do exactly the same thing. We'll create a new file and then hit Save. Uh, we're sort of role playing here. The two sites could be working on the same project. I'm an engineer in Holland. I'm about to save a file. It's going to issue me with a number ABC dash, then the next number in the sequence. So what, what's, the, what's, what's the problem? What's the problem? Well, the problem is this SQL heartbeat, the one to two minute long SQL heartbeat, because not only does that heartbeat transmit folder changes, file changes in the vault, but that SQL heartbeat also transmits the numbering scheme changes. That heartbeat is responsible for one server telling another server that it is issued a part number. So in the UK, I'm going to hit save and I'm going to pick the test numbering scheme and I'm going to allow it to issue me part number. So it's issued me part number two, ABC-0002. I'm going to save that in the test folder in my local workspace and I've been issued with the part number two. Now, if I go on over to Holland and then hit save, my Dutch server, because of this one to two minute long heartbeat, it has not been told yet that part number two has been issued into the UK. So it's now going to allow me to generate a part number and it's given me the exact same part number that's been issued to the UK. So unfortunately, we've now got two people in two different parts of the world. Maybe they've never even spoke to each other before. They've probably got no idea who each other are, perhaps, but they've both been issued with the exact same part number and they're now both working on the same named file in two different parts of the world. At the moment, it's not a problem at the moment because both of these files are local. The problem happens when you go on over to one of the sites and let's do some modeling changes. So let's actually model something up. So in the UK, we'll model up, uh, let's do a cylinder. And that's, uh, that looks flashy. Looks all uh, professional like. So we'll do a, a solid model cylinder and we're gonna check this into the UK vault. I wish we need to save it first, don't we? Uh, check in and we'll put that into the test folder in the UK vault. Now, if we head on over to Holland, let's go into the vault and do a quick refresh. The Dutch server has absolutely no idea that ABC-0002 file has been checked in to the, uh, to the UK vault. So that leaves us with a bit of a pickle. What do you do? Well, at the moment, the guy in Holland hasn't got a clue that that file's even there. He doesn't know that the guy in the UK has been given the file with the same number. He's got no idea. So what he's going to do is he's going to go to his vault add-in and he's going to try and check in his file to the same folder. But it's going to give him an error and it's going to say, I'm sorry, that you can't do that. You can't check in your file uh, because uh, one or more entities required to perform this operation are not currently owned by your work group. Now the user is going to read that and he's not going to have the faintest idea what this means. He's just going to be given an error message and he's going to be given a yes or no option and he's going to click yes and nothing happens absolutely nothing happens and he's going to sit and he's going to wait and he's going to try it again so he's going to go okay all right well i'm going to check this in again click okay and now it gives him an even lesser error message the server written the following information one or more entities required to perform the operation are currently not owned by your work group uh okay so then what he's going to do is he's going to go to his vault client and he's going to go refresh and he's not and he's going to see that there's nothing in that folder he's going to be completely confused as to why he can't check something into this folder all along all along the reason that this problem is happening is because the folder that this file is trying to go into is currently it's just been owned by the uk the the guy in the uk has just added a file into that folder and the sql heartbeat is currently in the process of transmitting that folder change over to Holland. So in order for this guy in Holland to check a file into the same folder, his site needs to own the folder that the file's going into, but it can't request that ownership because it's in the process of being carried across by the heartbeat. It's completely locked out. So what he's going to do is he's just going to wait a while. Ultimately, within a minute or two, the, the changes are going to be transmitted from the UK server to the Dutch server. This file, ABC-002, is gonna ultimately end up being transmitted across to the Dutch server eventually. So whilst it's doing that, I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna replicate what the guy in Holland would do, because he's not just gonna be sat there with an empty file, he's gonna be doing some work. He's gonna be making design changes and doing whatever he 
was planning on doing in the first place. So let's model up uh, a cube over in Holland. Uh, there we go. And let's just save that. And let's see if the changes have been transmitted yet. Has the heartbeat carried the file over? It has. Right, so that file has just appeared over in the Dutch folder. Notice the little I thing there, though, the little I status symbol. That is an unknown status because Vault now hasn't got the faintest idea what's going on. Vault has added this file to the Dutch workgroup. This client has detected that file ABC-0002 is in the workspace of this client. But it's a completely different file. This file here is a circular little cylinder. We modeled that in the UK. But if we go on over to the Dutch client, this is now a cube. So Vault's like, I have got no idea what's going on here. The user hasn't got any idea what's going on here. In fact, the user now can't even check his file in at all because he's got a completely different file ID to what's in the Vault. So what does he do? What does he do? Well, he, he probably goes home at this point and gives up. But the only option that it gives him, really, is refresh file or get revision. If he does refresh file, guess what happens? It completely overwrites his work with what came from the UK. Within those two minutes, for that SQL heartbeat to transmit numbering scheme changes from one site to the other, you can have potentially dozens of people generating dozens of part numbers within the space of two minutes. Magnify this problem by dozens of people across several sites and you've got yourself a monumental headache. This is something which just does not work. It does not work at all. In this example, I was showing you what happens if you try to check in this file to the same folder. It gives you a denied message saying that well, we just can't do that because the folder is not owned by your site. We can't transfer ownership. It's not going to happen. But if you were trying to check this file into a different folder, the user would be denied check-in access because but you should have unique file names turned on in the vault. So if we go into administration and vault settings, you can see how we've got enforce unique file names turned on. ABC-0002 exists in the test folder. If I was to try and check this file into project ABC folder, Vault's going to deny check-in because ABC-0002 already exists in the Vault. Again, the user's going to be like, I, what? But it's just giving me the number. How can the file already be in the Vault? It's just giving me the number. Not knowing and being completely unaware and having absolutely no way of knowing, Vault actually issued the same number to somebody else somewhere in the world because it took his server a couple of minutes to tell the other server that the number had been used. And that doesn't just apply to files either, that applies to items, which uh, items has a mechanism in which can get around this by appending the work group uh, suffix to the end of the item number, which is no good to anybody. The same goes for Autodesk Vault. You can go into your numbering scheme and you can tell it to <laughs> It's just ridiculous. I'm only saying this because somebody in the comments may say, well, did you know you could do this? This is what I would do. No, you wouldn't do this. In your numbering scheme, all right, mine's set up ABC dash number. So it's prefix, delimiter, auto number. You can put a bit on the end, which is your site name. The site name is usually, you know, UK slash London or... US slash Texas. That would be your site name. You can put that on the end of your part number or your file name. Nobody does that. Nobody puts their site name in their part numbers or in their file names. It wouldn't work. It's not a feasible solution. The only feasible solution if you're working in a replicated system is to unfortunately don't you you cannot use the same numbering scheme across the same sites. You have to use unique numbering schemes per site or it just will not work. Uh, I'm happy to discuss this with anybody from Autodesk if they've got a workaround for this, but as far as I can tell, unless you can speed up that SQL heartbeat between sites and uh, prevent the same number from being issued at two different places, there is absolutely nothing you can do about this. It is an inherent flaw with the, the way this system is designed, and you've just got to work around it. So uh, that, that's it, that's it. <laughs> I probably went on for too long. But that should be the problem explained, and I'm going to point people towards this if I ever need to have the discussion in the future. So there you go. Just be aware. All right. Toodles.